Where does entrepreneurship come from and when did it begin? Many entrepreneurs today consider entrepreneurship as a vocation to appear in the 1700s. While that is true considering the term entrepreneur that was coiled in the 1700s of France, it is not true for the actual venture activities of an entrepreneur. When we look back in history to documents like the Bible, archaeological findings, stories and studying the lifestyle of earlier cultures, we recognize very distinct qualities that we today attribute to entrepreneurship. Attributes like problem recognition, crafting a solution, providing and delivering the solution, talent recognition, problem solving, management of even just as big of a group as your own family. Whenever you create something from scratch with a future vision result in mind, you are being an entrepreneur. Just as creating a whole flock of sheep from one or two sheep to begin with. When you travel with your crafts from town to town, you are being an entrepreneur. We often forget to consider like growing a garden that will bring the profits of its fruits and vegetables to our very own table. Profits not always have been reaped in the form of money. Very often, in the, especially in the earlier cultures, it was considered to be an entrepreneurial venture just to give away your daughter into marriage or to pay for a wife to have us into marriage. In order to prove my point, I created a story for you. I hope you will enjoy it. Adam, right after his creation, walking around in Eden, naming all the animals and plants, began to recognize that he was indeed alone while all God's creatures were in pairs. While he complained about to God, every time he was asked the question, so what do you want in a mate? He was not able to answer. So God let him go into the garden and consider his answer a little longer. Well, eventually, God has decided that it was not good for man to be alone. He summoned him for one more time and decided to make put an end to this depression. Ask him one more time, Adam, what would you like in a helpmate? Adam considered his answer very carefully and he said, I would like her to be just like my own flesh and blood, supportive in my decisions, laugh with me from morning till night, and at night to answer to the cause of passion as I needed. Oh well, Adam, that is might not be enough for a helpmate. Let me help you out. I'm going to give you two eaves and you're going to choose which one you wanted. The first one is everything you have ever wanted and you described. She will also be a woman who bear your children but never wake you up at night to take care of them. Someone who will cook for you, grow a garden for food, and gather in nature and never ever ask for help. Someone who will clean for you, make your clothes and wash it when it's needed and never complain that you tore it again. Someone who will tell your stories 
to your grandchildren and never ever mention the embarrassing parts. And someone who when she goes to bed at night and rises in the morning will never complain that you forgot about her. The other Eve, in the other hand, will point out your faults, correct you, expect you to return from the hunt with the prey, expect you to grow and increase every year with your flocks. Someone who will call upon you when she needed advice and guidance within the ways of the Lord. Someone who will remember your embarrassing stories and laugh at them inside her heart. So which one of the E's do you want, Adam? And of course, Adam chose the first one and God said, well, what are you willing to give for it? Are you willing to give an arm and a leg? Oh, Adam was surprised. Wow, I don't think I can live without an arm and a leg. Is there something you can give me for a rib? And God said, oh, oh, Adam, that's going to be the second Eve. So next time, when you think about where bargaining and trading has begun, remember this story. As far as I can tell, man was made an entrepreneur already in Eden. Eden. Take care, folks. Until tomorrow. Bye-bye.